It's been more than two years. For the first time in March of 2021, CEO Elon Musk confirmed that SpaceX was working towards a target of July 2021 for Starship's first orbital launch attempt. In October of the same year, a NASA document suggested that the next generation rocket's orbital launch debut has slipped several months into 2022. We'll do it. A bunch of tests in in december and hopefully launch in, in january but moving to 2022 until june musk tweeted starship will be ready to fly next month not only spacex but bill nelson also announced that there would be an uncrewed starship hls lunar landing in late 2023 and a human landing in late 2024 but here we are together in the middle of march of 2023 even though spacex had previously promised a must-see tv event this month and what do we get? Nothing. Zip. Zilch. Nada. But why did this happen? Well, this is Elon Musk, and also he just revealed why Starship's orbital flight is very difficult at the Morgan Stanley 2023 Technology, Media, and Telecommunications Conference on March 7th. This is a very difficult program. Um, the, the rocket is um, roughly two and a half times the thrust of a Saturn V, so if it went or, Therefore, once it reaches orbit, it will be uh, by far the biggest rocket to reach orbit. But more importantly, it is designed to be the first fully reusable rocket, orbital rocket uh, ever. Alrighty now, so let's take a closer look at what Musk just said. First, Starship is the largest rocket to reach orbit, or it will be. We'd probably take a step back to better understand what SpaceX is trying to do with Starship. This vehicle is the second stage of a launch system that includes a large booster named Super Heavy. With its Falcon 9 program, SpaceX has demonstrated the ability to launch and land a rocket vertically. But the real trick comes with Starship, specifically bringing it back safely from orbital velocity and through the atmosphere so that it can be launched with minimal refurbishment a short time later. At 120 meters, the stacked Starship and Super Heavy rocket is the world's tallest rocket, and the Starship is designed to do complex flips and maneuvers upon landing. And that's understandable when it's no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. Many of these failures happened simply because Starship is a new system trying to do unusual things. SpaceX started testing the first prototype, Starhopper, in mid-2019, and until May of 2021, they had the first successful landing with Starship SN15. SpaceX has come a long way since then, moving through over 10 various Starship test vehicles and tank designs to reach orbital flight. Along with that, it's costing a lot of Elon Musk's money. But the biggest of size would be nothing if Starship can't be the most powerful rocket in the world. Powered by 33 upgraded Raptor 2 engines that SpaceX says can produce up to 230 tons or around 510,000 pound force each, Starship can produce almost 7,600 tons or 16.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff, beating the previous record holder, the Soviet N1 rocket, by nearly 60%. However, achieving that greatness will never be easy, as Raptor is always a big problem that SpaceX has to struggle with. The Raptor engine has been in development for the better part of a decade, going through a number of iterations. At its core, it's like other engines, burning chemical fuel to produce thrust. But its use of liquid oxygen and methane, which is something largely unprecedented in the rocket industry, and its innovative design means that it just might be SpaceX's ace in the hole when it comes to exploring the solar system. The use of methane also creates a bunch of difficulties for SpaceX, because, let's face it, no methane-powered rocket has ever made it to orbit. Raptor also uses what's known as a full-flow staged combustion engine, or an FFSC engine. Only the third engine in history to employ this technique, whereas Merlin uses the more common open cycle system. The previous two attempts at such an engine, one in the Soviet Union in the 60s and another in the US in the early 2000s, never made it beyond testing. A full-flow staged combustion engine refers to how a pump spins a turbine to drive the engine, using what's called a pre-burner to get this process going by injecting a small amount of fuel. 
Normally, some of the propellants are expended in a traditional open cycle engine to start this process, but Raptor will use every drop of propellants available, making it one of the most efficient rocket engines ever built. The end result is that Raptor has a much higher pressure than Merlin, which would be about three times greater, making it the highest pressure rocket engine in existence and leading to its aforementioned larger thrust than Merlin, despite its similar size. Last but not least, Musk is concerned about the challenges of building a fully reusable rocket, as he should, because this is extremely insane. Much of the Starship program's time since late 2019 has been focused on building a factory in South Texas to churn out Starship prototypes. And after only two years of construction and development, surely anyone could see the current change in Starbase. Prominent at the launch sites is the giant launch tower, which is 140 meters high. This will be a support device that Elon Musk believes will support the landing of Starship and Super Heavy. This is considered an alternative to landing pins, while increasing reusability and minimizing turnaround time between launches, because Musk wants Starship to be able to turn around after only an hour. However, one could only understand how hard it is to construct this launch tower, especially given the weather and climate conditions in Starbase, where powerful gusts from the sea constantly blow, impeding work. It's all over now, though. Importantly, the process of a catching launch tower requires a great deal of precision, requiring SpaceX to establish the most advanced navigation and control system available today. And SpaceX still has so much more to learn about Starship. This upper stage rocket need not simply fire its engines for 8 minutes and then fall into the ocean like the SLS core stage. It has to be capable of making multiple relights of its engines, surviving for weeks or even months in space, and re-entering through Earth's atmosphere with minimal effects to ensure rapid reusability. And then it has to stick the landing. This is not an easy to do list for something several times larger than a school bus that travels at 25 times the speed of sound. So, SpaceX has a long way to go. In the words of SpaceX's engineer John Innsbrucker, we've just got to work on that landing a little bit. Yeah, that and a million other things before satellites, let alone people, fly into space on Starship. It's truly difficult work, but we believe that SpaceX will get it right anyway. So assuming things go, go well there, this, this vehicle is, could make life multiplanetary. That's a really big deal. Uh, could make li life on Mars real. And I think that's, uh, I mean, that's one of the great cultures that, uh, that any civilization has to pass through, which is, does the civilization become multiplanetary or not? This is one of the elements of the Fermi paradox. I mean, I, I, I sort of wonder that if we are able to get to multiplanetary, that'll be a forcing function for ultimately get, improving space flight to become multi-stellar, to go to other star systems. And I think we may discover that there are many long dead one planet civilizations. Um, we don't want to be one of those. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to be one of those lame one planet civilizations. <laughs> That's all the information we have for you today. If you appreciate the work my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.